Let's take a quick look now at the sulfur analogs of ethers, which are called thioethers or sulfides. And sulfides, of course, are analogous to thiols, except that instead of having the sulfhydro group, they just have an additional carbon group linked to the sulfur. Like ethers, the sulfur atom of a thioether is weakly basic, but a pretty good nucleophile. And so the pattern here follows the same pattern we saw for alcohols and thiols, where the sulfur is a weaker base than the ether oxygen, but a better nucleophile. As we saw for ethers, the carbon groups linked to the thioether sulfur have the potential to act as electrophiles and accept electrons with cleavage of the carbon-sulfur bond. But typically, this only occurs after the formation of positive formal charge on the sulfur atom, turning it into a pretty good leaving group or nucleophuge. And so the chemistry of thioethers is generally very similar to the chemistry of ethers, with one important exception. And the exception is related to one we saw for the alcohol thiol comparison previously. But first, let's look at some reactivity that's similar to the protonation of an ether, at least conceptually, and that is nucleophilic attack by the sulfur atom to form a new carbon sulfur or more generally electrophile sulfur bond. So from a general perspective, reactivity like this involves the coordination of the thiol sulfur to some electrophile. So in general, we can denote that as E plus and the resulting structure after some kind of elementary step like AD sub N, nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond, or AN, coordination of the sulfur directly to a six electron building block, is going to lead to a product in which the sulfur atom is positively charged. And this tends to strongly increase the electrophilicity or electron accepting ability of the R groups linked to sulfur. This is actually an extremely important process in biochemical systems in the context of the formation of S methyl methionine, an important metabolite. S-methylmethionine is fairly near and dear to my heart as a home brewer because it's an important biochemical precursor to dimethyl sulfide for reasons that we'll see shortly, which is an unwanted byproduct in the production of beer that it's important to get rid of during the brewing process. In any event, methionine is an amino acid whose side chain looks like this. For the time being, this is all you need to know. It is a thioether. The side chain contains a sulfide, and this sulfide can coordinate to an electrophilic methyl group under biochemical conditions. And all we need to know for the time being is that this methyl group becomes linked to something that can serve as a good leaving group. And so through something like an SN2 elementary step, the methionine sulfur displaces the leaving group and forms a new bond to the methyl group. Notice that this is analogous to the electron flow above. It's just that there's an additional flow of electrons within the electrophile to kick off a leaving group. After this happens, the resulting structure contains a positively charged sulfur atom. And this is S-methylmethionine, or as it's known at least in the brewing world, and probably other places as well, SMM. Now, S-methylmethionine is a precursor to dimethyl sulfide. And the structure of dimethyl sulfide is simply that thioether sulfur linked to two methyl groups. And to understand why this is the case, we need only notice that the coordination of the thioether sulfur to a methyl group through this electron flow right here has rendered this carbon electrophilic. That means if some nucleophile comes in, it could be as simple and abundant as water coming in and acting as a nucleophile here and displaces the sulfur through SN2 or related electron flow, one of the products we end up with, in fact, the product derived from the leaving of sulfur is DMS, dimethyl sulfide. S-methylmethionine is also important as a methylating agent in biochemical systems because, of course, the methyl groups linked to the positively charged sulfur atom are electrophilic as well. So this can be a way to carry around electrophilic methyl groups in biochemical systems without using leaving groups that are too strong like bromide or chloride. All this reactivity is sort of analogous to the protonation of an ether oxygen, but there is reactivity of thioethers that's really unique. And this, again, relates to the unique behavior of thiols that we've seen previously and their ability to undergo oxidation reactions. In fact, thioethers can also undergo oxidation reactions. 
And the general idea here really, again, is the coordination of sulfur as a nucleophile to an electrophilic atom. It's just that in an oxidation context, the electrophilic atom happens to be oxygen. And so through some kind of general electron flow like this, we end up with a new sulfur oxygen bond. And this can be drawn a couple of different ways. Actually, the S plus O minus resonance structure, which I'm drawing right here, is not a bad way to draw these structures. After one oxidation event, that is the formation of one sulfur oxygen linkage, we end up at what's called a sulfoxide, dimethyl sulfoxide, in which the two R groups or methyl groups is probably the most famous example of a sulfoxide. It's a very stable, very nice to work with, I know from personal experience, organic solvent. But there are other sulfoxides that are in biochemical systems and used in laboratory chemistry as well. And an additional oxidation event, which involves the formation of a second sulfur oxygen linkage, leads to a structure like this. And here, it may be best to go ahead and draw a double bond to that new oxygen, just to avoid too much positive charge on sulfur. You also see, by the way, quite often the resonance form with two double bonds drawn to the sulfur atom, two SO double bonds like this, and this structure two resonance structures of which are shown for you here, is called a sulfone. And just to make this clear, the sulfone comes from a second coordination event of the sulfur, the nucleophilic sulfur atom to oxygen. So some kind of electron flow like this leads from the sulfoxide to the sulfone. The exact oxidizing agents used to affect these transformations can vary, but it could be anything from hydrogen peroxide in a laboratory context to a biochemical oxidizing agent like NAD plus along with water in a biochemical context it really depends on the circumstances. But even so, it's important to keep in mind at this point that the sulfur is just amenable to oxidation. And again, the point I want to emphasize, which we looked at in the thiol discussion as well, is that all of this stems from the nucleophilic nature of the sulfur atom whether it's in a thioether or in a thiol. Electron donation from the sulfur is the basis of both its reactivity as a nucleophile and its oxidation. And so keeping in mind that that sulfur is a good nucleophile is your best bet for understanding the chemistry of thiols and thioethers.